situation like this because you actually had uh, me and Lala last week at the Metropolitan Detention Center. Mm -hmm. And one young woman there, I'm not going to say her name, but she was telling me that it took a while for her to even take accountability for her actions that led her to be in jail. Mm -hmm. So for you, because what you've described to me is, you know, this is what you thought. Like, you know, they knew this whole thing was a setup. It was a sting operation. You didn't have anything on you. At what point did you say... I, I am, yeah, I am taken because, mm -hmm. and it's, you might feel like this was a setup. This is not fair, and it's an you would be angry to be in a situation like that, knowing that, like, damn, they just set me up. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of emotions did you go through? Yeah, in the beginning, um, I was that right, like very angry, very like, how could this happen? You know, not taking any accountability. It happened because I was the one in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, none of it. What changed me? I was. Because I was a federal detainee in a county jail, I was separated from all the population. So I was in a cell by myself, 21 to 23 hours a day, and they would let me out to like take a shower, use the phone, maybe eat a meal. And this went on for 11 months. And the only way you were able to out yourself is if you did programs, um, if you had a job. So I had a little job being a little cleaner. That was one thing I did to get out of the cell for an hour a day. Um, I also had... There was a computer class I taught that that was an hour a day. Mm -hmm. There was um, religious classes where people volunteers would come in, and I went to those. That was an hour a week. And then there was NA and AA classes, so um, Narcotics Anonymous and Alcohols Anonymous, and I went to those just to get out the cell. <laughs> and so I would sit in those classes and just listen. And at first, again, in my own arrogance and you know um, ignorance, I would just be like, whatever, when they're talking, you know, hi, my name is such, such, I'm an alcoholic or I'm an addict. I'm like, whatever, yeah, you know. And then one day I asked the question and I asked his sister, like, why did you use drugs? Like, you know, we all know it's just say no to drugs. You know, you don't do drugs, they're bad for you. And she was like, well, my father had been raping me and he gave me heroin for the first time and he told me to take the heroin and the pain would go away. And another girl was like, well, yeah, the only time I was able to spend time with my mom was when we smoked crack together. Damn. And I was like, yo. And I mean, I just broke down and cried because now I could actually see the effects. The fact, now I'm getting emotional yeah. now. Like, like you could actually see the effects that it has on people. You know, like now you see it they didn't just have you a were choice. Innocent and harmless in this, you were contributing. Absolutely, and it was like for me, how could I contribute to the harm of someone else? Right, like how could I knowingly do this? That this girl, someone, you know, my father protected me. I couldn't think about somebody's father raping them right. and that he and gave her drugs so that he could continue to rape her, right? So to just even hear that and understand that, for me, it changed my life, like, right. in that moment. And that was when I said, I'm going to plead guilty because I am. Right. And I said, I'm not going to fight this anymore um, because I have to make amends, right? Though I went to prison for 80 kilos, I had sold thousands over the years right and if this is the debt that I have to pay for the harm that I caused then this is going to help me in whatever way God deems fit in order for me to move forward in my life and to make amends and to redeem myself in my community and so that's what it was way up, way up. Yeah.